I, I'm joined in the studio with uh, Juliet Galletley, who is the director and founder of the vegan charity Viva. Good morning. 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 How are you today? I'm really well. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. So, an interesting topic, and uh, I, I have to confess, I, I am not vegetarian, but I have cooked some uh, vegan meals in the past, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's interesting uh, at the moment. So, why should people, in your opinion, cook dairy out of their diets? I think, yeah, you're right. People are changing and they're waking up to the impact of dairy. I just think we're so much more knowledgeable these days. Um, we're kind of realising that dairy is meant for a baby. Um, we've evolved like every other mammal to just have the milk of our own mother, um, not the milk of an entirely different species. And if you take a step back and look at it sort of cold, hard and scientifically, it becomes a rather bizarre occupation. And it's partly because cow's milk is is evolved, obviously, to get a calf mm. through very rapid growth to an adult, to a bull within a year, that the constituents of cow's milk is very, very different from human milk. So it's loaded with estrogens and progesterones and growth factors um, and proteins and fats that, that, that actually do us no good at all. Um, so, and that's why you can't give a baby, a human baby, under one cow's milk because it's just so different from human milk. And I think... People are waking up to the fact that it's not just an unnatural thing to do. It's actually causing us a lot of harm. So it's now been linked to prostate cancer in men, breast cancer in women, colon cancer, um, also biggie, heart disease, strokes and diabetes type 2. So when you've got a National Health Service, which is, you know, almost on its knees, I think we need to look at sort of trying to live a better life so that we don't get so much of these chronic diseases. And one way is to, is to cut dairy out of your diet completely. It's interesting because I suppose there, there's a psychology there, isn't there? And there's also perhaps in a lot of people uh, a comfort thing, things yeah. that, uh, <clears throat> they've, they've, you know, yeah, a glass of milk is always seen as something like, yeah, I have a nice warm glass of milk before you go to bed and it's comforting for you. And so, so a lot of it is in, it, yeah, it's inbuilt, isn't it, from childhood, like I say, from, from, from being a baby. Absolutely. And you know what? It's hardwired in us to think of milk as natural and pure because our very survival depends on it. Mm. And what the dairy industry have done is very clever, actually, and tried to make out that drinking the milk of another species past weaning is still natural and pure. Mm. But it isn't. But you're right. So much of it is. It, it's, it's habit. But... You know, you can get dairy-free versions of all these things. I mean, if you do like drinking milk as milk, you know, you can heat up soy milk. I mean, for example, I've got um, teenage sons and they will heat up soy milk and put it on, you know, on on their cereal. They're forever eating breakfast cereal at night now for supper mm. <laughs> and, right. and, so, and so forth. But, you know, and we do a guide called Everyone's Going Dairy-Free, which goes through practically every dairy thing that you could consume from custard to cream mm. to everything. Um and gives the dairy-free versions because that market has just exploded now. Yeah, I mean, I know I've tried the almond milk. Yeah. Well, that was nice, you know, and I think... Uh, well, I said that there's a lot of uh, different things to cha to try, isn't there? And there it is. About, it is about, I said, changing people's culture, you know, uh, and because, as, as I said, I mean, people have drunk or eaten dairy products for, for centuries, so... So has the change come because of the awareness then being raised? It has. I think disease levels, like of chronic diseases, are sort of a bit, you know, uh, uh, have reached a point where really we need to do something about it and the knowledge, the scientific knowledge to look at the impact of what our diet is doing to us is greater than it's ever been before. But also disseminating that information through social media is greater than ever before. And the other side of it is that the industry itself has become much more intensified. And so that has been exposed. So in the last, say, two decades, I mean, a cow today, for example, is milked seven months into her nine-month pregnancy, whereas once that never happened. Right. Um, then she gives birth and the milk kicks in and she's made pregnant through artificial insemination and so it all happens again. And so she gets a lot of tissue breakdown inside her. Um, um, a third of the UK's dairy herd have mastitis, which is a disease of the udders at any one time. So all milk in the UK contains pus, 
you know, that creamy stuff that you kind of squeeze out of a spot. Mm. Um, and the government knows this. It just says there's nothing we can do about it. This is the way the industry is. And, and increasingly in the UK as well, cows are going towards um, being zero grazed, which means they never see a blade of grass in their life. And, and right across Europe, that's already happened. You know, in fact, I was shocked, actually, when I researched this early this year, that most cows across Central Europe are actually tethered, so they can't even walk. Right. Um, so there are massive welfare issues related to this. And the other, just one thing on welfare I'd like to say is that the babies, the calves themselves... So a mother only gives milk because she's given birth to her calf. Well, what happens to the calves? Well, across Britain... Every single cow has her baby taken away from her at two to three days old, no matter whether the calf, sorry, whether the farm is free range, organic, or intensive indoor zero graze, they always take the calves away. So there are massive, massive welfare issues to do with um, the dairy industry, which I think are only just really being exposed in the last five years. The other thing that's happened is that the supermarkets are responding to the demand for dairy-free stuff, so therefore it's becoming easier and easier and easier for people to change. Mm. And as that happens, then the demand just gets greater and greater. So the whole, all this is coming together, the health, the animals, the environment too, and the ease of change, and it's causing a massive revolution in our, you know, in our eating habits across the UK. The, the one thing that I, I, I would like to mention that, within that though is that sometimes unless it is going to ease off you tend to find that a lot of the the non-dairy products are, are more expensive yeah it's and, the and supply and demand isn't it can, yeah. Yeah, but, it's, but yeah. it's like will that change because it's obviously people's economy has got to change as well to be able to afford that change in, in the diet that's right. I mean, if you go for the more exp- I won't mention them, but the more expensive, um, for example, plant milks, um, which are sold in the fridge, um, you know, they're like sort of one pound twenty to one pound eighty per litre. But if you go to in the supermarkets on the actual shelves, you'll find exactly pretty much the same product for between seventy and ninety pence. So, so you just have to be a little bit aware of things like that. Um, you know, you can get, you can get, you can shop cheaply if you want to. Is what I'm trying to say. Right. You don't, you don't have to buy all the expensive products. Um, and also, being vegan in itself, you can you can base your diet on plant based products if you're prepared to cook rather than buy all the ready maids and do it cheaper than you would on um, a non-vegan diet. It depends where you are, you know, what your budget is, what you enjoy doing, of course, whether you enjoy cooking and all those issues. But in my experience, anyway, food is only as good as the chef that makes it, no matter what your diet is. Um, So it's it's a bit about education as well. I mean, there's a guide we do called Everyone's Going Dairy Free, which has got... um, the alternatives to typical dairy products in it, if you want to buy them from custard through to the cheeses, through to chocolates. Yeah. But it's also got recipes in, so if you're interested in cooking cooking, and you want a little bit of inspiration, it's got very traditional, what would have been dairy recipes, you know, like quiches and so forth, and does the non-dairy version. So that And that's free to download from our website, which is um, viva.org.uk. Right. Okay, that's good. I mean, I mean, one thing that uh, I suppose a lot of people probably want to know more about is where the, where would they get the calcium? Yeah. From. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's reassuring to think that we've only been drinking as a species milk for about 6,000, 7,000 years. And I know that sounds like a long time, but actually we think for millions of years we've been getting calcium from somewhere else. Yeah. And also today, three quarters of the world's people still don't drink um, milk or eat dairy because they can't digest it. Most of the people in China and Vietnam, for example, almost all of them are lactose intolerant. And so dairy is not part of their tradition, nor is it in Thailand, which is why when you go in a Thai restaurant, they cook with coconut milk, not cow's milk. So that's just to reassure you, you know, they're not jelly blobs on the floor. They're getting the calcium perfectly well, like we have done for millions of years from plants. And we're superbly efficient at getting calcium out of plants. And the the good sources are dark green leafy vegetables, so it's your broccoli, watercress, cabbage. But it's also, if you think about um, the start of life of the plant, 
It's the nuts, the seeds, the pulses, peas, beans, lentils. So a product like hummus, which is, say, chickpeas and sesame seed, yeah. is very high in calcium, just as one simple example. And also, if you buy the plant milks, you know, like um, rice, um, almond milk, soya milk, they have exactly the same amount as calcium as buying um, cow's milk. Right. So it is very easy to get your calcium. Thanks for that. It's been a really interesting interview. But do you want to just give that website address out? Again yes. And then... Yeah. So the website is viva.org.uk, which has got everything on it. Or if you just want stuff on dairy, it's whitelies.org.uk. 